In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hello there. The devil's been on my back all week. I had to go up on the roof and do some maintenance and the wood surrounds of the windows just fell apart in my hand and I was immediately in emergency mode. I can't leave it like that. Yeah. So a small amount of DIY turned into a big nightmare and one after another thing went wrong and I knew it was a day when the devil would be breathing down my neck. And I had to field it, I had to deal with it, I had to make instant decisions and take action. Uh, so I did six and a half hours straight when he came down when my right thumb started cramping up into a claw. And that's life, you know, and I, I, I feel like a man, I feel, I remember what it's like to be a man. Life is hard and it can be merciless. My teacher says that the karma on this planet is very serious and nobody gets away with anything. Why is that? Well, it's simply a reflection of the low level of life here. Human beings are a lunatic asylum. They destroy each other, they cause havoc for each other, and they all think that somebody else is doing it, some bad guy in another country is doing it because of course I am a nice guy, that's what they all think. And so the maternal force has to work very hard to deal with life here. It has to enforce very strict rules of karma, so nobody gets away with nothing here. You reap what you sow. I'm not sure if people really understand what that means. It means that anything that happens to you is literally your fault. Or also the fault of your ancestors as some sort of collective component. But if you are able to look beyond the bullshit that people live in and do a fine job, live a man's life, it will come back to you. It will come back to you. And that's as good as it's going to get. And nobody's going to know, and nobody's going to do it with you, and nobody's going to notice. But Mother Nature will notice, and she will pay it back to you. Can you do that? Can you work like a man when nobody's clapping, but nobody knows who you are? It was, it was considered normal to live with such a spirit back in the times of the Roman Empire and the Greeks and many other beautiful cultures. I was sitting in a coffee shop today, drinking my fashionable flat white, and it was silent inside. That is a result of many hours of work. I'm doing many hours at the moment, and inside it's very silent, strangely silent. All those voices and disturbances, all those many eyes that had been there, they're fading away, leaving a strange silence. The thing that is clearer to me these days is that the talk and the words that fill so much of a human life doesn't really mean anything. And that those words are the result of an inner chaos, an inner lack of integration. That's what you're hearing. That's what the mind is. And the answer to that problem is certainly a type of integration and rehabilitation of all this material that's inside of you. But it is not done through thought, actually. And people criticize me if I talk about Catholicism. Well, I may be not the kind of Catholic that you may think. I treat Catholicism as a type of yoga, a yogic school and also a school from which my line comes. It is part of me. 
And when I go into a church and I light a candle and I look at the stained glass and I make those forms and sacraments, there is no talking and there is no thinking and there is no authority. And it is the practices that transform you. It is the practices that save you. As I recommend to people all the time, you should go and get trained in a traditional school because reading and talking isn't going to do shit. This morning I was just cycling down my road. A few of my neighbours were gathered around. There was a cat, a big fluffy one with a red collar. It was... It was shuddering and shaking as the last breaths were leaving it. It was preparing to die. And you will be there too one day. Okay, let me read something out from Gurdjieff now about octaves. The law of octaves explains many phenomena in our lives which are incomprehensible. First is the principle of the deviation of forces. Second is the fact that nothing in the world stays in the same place or remains what it was. Everything moves, everything is going somewhere, is changing, and inevitably either develops or goes down, weakens and degenerates, that is to say, it moves along either an ascending or a descending line of octaves. Third, that in the actual development itself, both ascending and descending octaves, fluctuations, rises and falls, are constantly taking place. We have spoken so far chiefly about the discontinuity of vibrations and about the deviation of forces. We must now clearly grasp two other principles. The inevitability of either ascent or descent in every line of development of forces, and also the periodic fluctuations, that is, rises and falls in every line, whether ascending or descending. Nothing can develop by staying on one level. Ascent or descent is the inevitable cosmic condition of any action. We neither understand nor see what is going on around and within us, either because we do not allow for the inevitability of descent when there is no ascent, or because we take descent to be ascent. These are two of the fundamental causes of our self-deception. We do not see the first one because we continually think that things can remain for a long time at the same level. And we do not see the second because ascents when we see them are in fact impossible. As impossible as it is to increase consciousness by mechanical means. Having learned to distinguish ascending and descending octaves in life, we must learn to distinguish ascent and descent within the octaves themselves. Whatever sphere of our life we take, we can see that nothing can ever remain level and constant. Everywhere and in everything precedes the swinging of the pendulum. Everywhere and in everything the waves rise and fall. Upon the law of octaves, in its three principal manifestations, depend many phenomena, both of a psychic nature, as well as those immediately connected with our life. Upon the law of octaves depends the imperfection and the incompleteness of our knowledge in all spheres without exception, chiefly because we always begin in one direction, and afterwards, without noticing, it proceeds in another. As has been said already, the law of octaves in all its manifestations was known, the ancient knowledge. Well, this can be studied and pondered at length. But I will say that the right way to approach this kind of material is to do it yourself. One way to do that is in Beelzebub's Tales, Gurdjieff talks about days of the week. The seven days, five and two, right? And he talks about how in ancient societies each day had a particular meaning. For instance, Monday was the day of initiation of a question. Two, meaning Tuesday, was a day where you were contemplating how to approach that question. And three was execution, that is Wednesday. And he continues with the whole week. 
If you were to do that in your life, the octaves would become part of you. You would learn how to do octaves in your life. And once it is inside of you, then you have the possibility of feeling it outside of you. First comes the masculine practice. Later, you'll be able to see it, feel it outside and make some sense of it. If not, you have not the slightest hope in hell to see it outside. And that goes with all the other cosmic descriptions that Gurdjieff gives. This reminds me of something from the Tao Te Ching, one particular chapter, I'll read it out. In the pursuit of learning, every day something is acquired. In the pursuit of Tao, every day something is dropped. Less and less is done, until non-action is achieved. When nothing is done, nothing is left undone. The world is ruled by letting things take their course. It cannot be ruled by interfering. As I get older, I recognize that of the few books that are written by men that mean anything at all, this is one of the best, and hidden inside is real technical knowledge. Now here he says the world is ruled by letting things take their course. What that means is that you observe rhythms and cycles at all scales in front of you, and you do not interfere with them, moreover you assist them in completing things. You assist octaves, rhythms and cycles. And by doing so, you become something inside of yourself. Every day something is dropped, something of the world, because you become contained within. The next chapter begins, the sage has no mind of his own. He is aware of the needs of others. The sage has no mind of his own. It means that the many eyes are fully integrated. He is quiet inside. By being quiet inside, he is aware of the needs of others. That is what that means. To finish up, a warning from Gurdjieff. He says, Generally speaking, the being of a modern man is of very inferior quality. But it can be of such bad quality that no change is possible. This must always be remembered. People whose being can still be changed are very lucky. But there are people who are definitely diseased, broken machines, with whom nothing can be done, and such people are in the majority. If you think of this, you will understand why only few can receive real knowledge. Their being prevents it. He said that about 100 years ago. Take care.